Hello, I hope you're all doing well. We're at that time of year at the moment where you don't really know what day of the week it is. And even though you've taken most of your Christmas decorations down, your house is still a bit of a mess. That's kind of what has happened to my hamster's enclosure too. Obviously that's a reflection on me and not her, but I thought now would be the perfect time to show you how I do a little clean of her cage every week or so. I'll generally spot clean every couple of days, and that's just removing any visible soiled bedding. But every week I'll go deeper and clean out her hideouts and burrows as well as wiping down her wheels to clean and safe. Every month I'll do a bit more of a deep clean where I'll do the same as what I do weekly but I'll probably replace most of the bedding where she tends to burrow and sleep and that's when I'll sanitise the wooden hideouts and toys in the oven too. So obviously to begin with it's easiest to just start removing everything and like I said I will wipe down the wheels with some clean and safe. For the sand bath what I'm going to do is just pour it all through a sieve and this is just because there is a load of bedding all mixed in with it and it really is driving me insane. This actually took way longer than you'd expect but I think half of it is because I could do with a bigger sieve. Once everything is out of the way in one section, that's when I can start removing the top layer of bedding. I don't really have to go too deep here because Mabel doesn't really like or burrow in the hemp bedding which is a bit annoying because I do have 50 litres of it left. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to phase it out gradually. So each time I clean I'll just take a little bit more of it out and replace it with Katie Clean and Cozy or possibly another type of bedding. But I do need to do a little bit more research first because I'm not too sure yet as to what's as good as Katie Clean and Cozy for maintaining burrows but also that has a little bit of a difference in texture. So if you can give me any suggestions that would be amazing. But yeah I'm just carrying on and taking out the rest of the things in there and then removing any bedding inside of them or on them. After I put that red willow ball in the last video, I hadn't seen it since, so I'm quite glad I found it now because it does freak me out when things go missing in really small spaces. Like, you know when you lose something at home and you think you must have a demon and nothing about? That's what it reminds me of. Most of the bedding is clean, so if I'm not taking it out to replace it, I am just fluffing it back up by ruffling it around. And when I do take things out, I just like to give them a little shake because otherwise the bedding gets everywhere. Then I am unfortunately taking out the gingerbread houses for good as they are the last Christmassy things in there. Mabel wasn't really bothered by the single story ones that I made but she absolutely loved the two story one. I know it's only really simple but it is great because it gives them another little thing to do. So I've already made a little indent in the bedding where I want the sand bath to go which makes things so much easier and then to secure that in place I'm just using a huge spoon to shovel bedding all around the sides. I'm not using my hands because that's when things get really messy and the bedding will go all over the shop and that sieving will have been for nothing. So a tiny bit of hemp did fall in at one point but I won't cry about that I promise. <laughs> now I'm just making another indent in the bedding where I want to put smaller of the two logs. I know it just looks like I'm putting everything back in the same place, which I kind of am, I guess, but slightly differently. I want Mabel to know where most things are still, but I want to let her be curious and realise that things have changed slightly. I've read once on a forum that it's like your bedroom, so sometimes rearranging everything is so satisfying and exciting and you just want people to come and look at the difference. But if someone's rearranging your room every single week, it would just be a bit jarring and stressful, so that's why I like to do it this way. Okay, so now for the main event, cleaning out Mabel's chambered hideout and burrows. Because I'm not doing a deep clean, I'm not going to be sanitising the hideout in the oven. But if I was, I'd turn the oven on to 100 degrees centigrade and basically I'd bake it for 20 minutes and then let it cool down thoroughly before putting it back in. Oh my god, I always feel so bad if I end up working her up like this. But we've done this enough times for her to be more inquisitive than she is stressed. And to be honest, I think she's probably a bit disorientated because she's still a bit sleepy. But anyway, this section of the enclosure is always where I need to remove the most bedding. But I'll ruffle through it just to see what's clean and what needs to be taken out. It is generally the bottom layers that I need to fully remove because that's where she spends most of her time. From before, if you remember me talking about how much Mabel loved the two-storey gingerbread house, that is what inspired this purchase. 
I just thought it looked so nice and would make the enclosure look a lot more natural as well. So I couldn't help myself and I got this for about £12 off of Amazon, but I'm sure you can get the same one from places like eBay as well. At first I did put this in the corner and our little home owner came to check it out. But when I was going to put the chambered hide back in, I realised that it probably just wasn't the best place for it. So I moved it out of the way temporarily and oh my god, I just, I really can't deal with it. So before I put the hide back in, I'm piling up even more bedding so there'll be about 12 inches of it. Again, I'm just filling up the rooms with more bedding. She used to use one of them for her food stores, but because I kept coming in like this to take away the dirty bedding, she's moved everything somewhere else. And I'm not actually sure where that is yet, which I guess is a good thing for her, because it gives her peace of mind. And did you know that if you take food away from hamster stores too often, it does affect their mental health, which I think is really sad. So I thought having the big log in front of one of the entrances of the hideout would be a nice little feature. And I'm not sure if Mabel felt the same way, but if she didn't, she didn't say anything, so I just left it there. Then I'm just going in with more KC Clean and Cozy. Obviously the more bedding the better, but mine slopes upwards from around 6 inches to 12 towards the back of the enclosure. So now I've got the new little house in, her main wheel which I've cleaned and then I'm just going to put a sanded branch into. I got mine from Z Plus and it was really affordable actually. I might get another one but I don't want to run out of space because I do like her to have a bit of space where she can almost run from one end of the enclosure to the other without having to climb or manoeuvre around anything. Then, when I was searching for wooden houses on Amazon, I came across this beauty and I could not resist. My favourite thing is the little hollow log that she can climb in and then climb up to the top in, because I know she'll love that. So I'm just going to put that there and I keep pushing down on it and adjusting the bedding around it so that it's stable and won't move around if Mabel does climb all over it. And I'm really happy with that side of the cage. Honestly, I think if I put a bit of moss on everything, surely, surely, <laughs> you could call that a natural enclosure. The left side is a little bit more bootleg, but I know that's where she'll have the most fun and that's what matters. No one's actually ever questioned why I have two wheels in for her, but I just think it's because it's nice to have a little variation, so she uses both equally, and I think it would be like if I had two different types of treadmill, like it's the same thing but different. I'm just putting a few finishing touches in, like the wooden bendy bridge and my handmade popsicle stick houses. I like to put one in the sand now just in case she wants to go and have a little roll around in privacy. I mean she doesn't do that but I do like her to have the option. And then I know that I nearly forgot but don't worry. I'm going to deal with the water situation now. So to stick her bottle to the wall I use velcro and I'm just attaching one piece to where I want it to sit in the enclosure. And then I've got another already on the bottle. So I'll just give it a little bit of a wiggle wiggle to make sure that it's secure and then we are done. As always, I've sprinkled food around the enclosure just to make sure that Mabel has a proper explore and is distracted by her surroundings rather than stressed out about everything being changed around. But from watching her explore, I don't think that I needed to be worried. I think she would have had a grand time even without the food. Thank you so much for watching, please comment, like and subscribe.